So what's the reality? Are these N95 masks useful or just big piles of trash? The data is finally in and in this video we're going to talk about whether these were actually worth anything at all. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about N95 masks and whether these are of any value at all when it comes to disease prevention. But first I want to talk about whether or not this is even an important question to be thinking about, and it absolutely is. Now I know uh, COVID has entered kind of an endemic stage, it's not really of any particular danger to the vast majority of the population, that notwithstanding there are plenty of people that in the future are going to die from it, people who are older, people who have suppressed immune systems, in the same way that colds and flus have killed people from those groups in the past and will continue into the future. It's unfortunate, but COVID certainly isn't a mortal threat to the vast majority of the population at this point. So why is this even an important question to be asking is, you know, you know are, are these of any value anymore? Well, the reason it's important is for uh, a reason that I've uh, been talking about for the past several years. I'm not going to say right from the beginning of COVID because I didn't really know what COVID was going to turn into, but certainly after several months into COVID, uh, it, it became apparent to me that COVID was not the deadly disease that was going to wipe out the population that people had been selling it as, but I still wanted to be really cautious about it for a very specific reason. And the reason I wanted to try to avoid getting COVID, uh, well, A, is because, you know, even though I was learning more about it, it was still a little bit unknown, so I, you know, why mess with that if you can avoid it? But an even more important reason uh, is because it was a great, in my mind, testing opportunity to test my protocols to see if I was able to avoid contracting a virus during a pandemic uh, when the situation was that the risk was not, uh, at least for my demographic, looking like it was really life-threatening. So I had an opportunity to see whether my protocols would work without actually having to stake my life on it. So I saw it as a great opportunity for that. Other people saw it as a great opportunity to kind of shoot their mouths off and uh, kind of uh, pontificate about uh, you know, uh, political ideas and freedom. And you know, more power to them. I think that it is important to always remind people that in a free society, it's important to value freedom. So I appreciate that they were doing that, but they definitely missed out on an opportunity to see whether their protocols would have been able to protect them, but that was fine. I mean, they, they did the uh, political posturing, so I didn't have to, and I was able to selfishly uh, figure out whether or not my protocols were actually going to be effective. Were they effective? Well, uh, for the years prior to COVID, every single year, you know, one or two colds or flus every single year in my household. I've got a kid and he's younger, so, you know, we we're always getting things in. It was just like a fact of life. Every cold and flu season, there'd be like two or three colds that would go through our house. Uh, as soon as we started taking our protocols for, uh, you know, during the COVID period, that went from 100% of the time every single year down to zero for three years running. And we still haven't had any communicable diseases since we started taking precautions. So that was a great opportunity for me to test out what we were doing and see whether or not it was effective. But now I'm wondering whether this part of our protocols offered any help at all or whether this is just some magical talesman that you know felt like I was protecting myself when in fact I really wasn't. Why am I asking that question? Well there have been a lot of studies coming out and the studies uh, that I'm seeing are suggesting that N95 masks really don't offer that much protection if anything at all. And I think it's really important to figure out whether or not that's true because while COVID was not something that certainly threatened myself or the vast majority of the population, I think it's reasonable to think that in the future there could be a virus going around in the world that is a lot more dangerous. And honest to God, I would like to know if this is effective at all. Uh, not because it's like if I find out it's, if it's not effective, I can be like, oh, I can take that off, I don't need that. But you know, I have gone into situations where I was presuming some degree of safety was being conferred by wearing this. If there wasn't, I'd really like to know that if that situation I was going into was more dangerous than COVID has been. So that's why I think it's really important to figure out whether this uh, is true or not. So uh, like I was mentioning, uh, we have been very successful at not getting any kind of disease over the past several years. No, you know, no communicable illnesses have entered our house. So the things that we've been doing to try to make that uh, happen was one, wearing N95 masks, and that's the topic we're uh, uh, focusing on in this video. But there's been other things we've been doing as well. Another thing is that uh, during cold and flu season, 
you know, there's always places that you go and you know those are the kind of places where you tend to pick up, uh, you know, illness. You're going into packed places with lots of people, you know, other people that are sick, you know, you're at work and you, you know that the guy or woman next to you is, you know, they're sick with a cold. In the past, it was just kind of like, this is what we do. We, we share this stuff and we get sick. I just kind of started avoiding those types of situations. It doesn't mean that we didn't go out and, you know, you know go grocery shopping and things like that. But whenever we went into a situation when uh, it was you know, plausible that there could be ill people around us and it was kind of like a little bit, uh, you know, uh, more uh, packed in environment, you know, I would wear something like this. Uh, but we were certainly limiting how many times we went out and we did that. Uh, the other thing that we did is we, you know, we're doing hand washing and we were uh, sanitizing uh, objects that were coming into our house, whether it be mail or groceries. And honestly, I'm still doing that. Uh, and the reason is because I kind of just enjoy not being sick. I don't know whether it was this or just not uh, putting ourselves out there quite as frequently or whether it was the sanitizing. I don't know what is the active leg of the stool, but uh, you know, it's really great not being sick and I kind of don't want to mess with that. And particularly with groceries, uh, we've been sanitizing them with UV light and I've kind of worked on a theory in my head that that might actually make the produce last longer because I'm also kind of killing uh, you know, mold spores and uh, other types of things that might lead to the spoiling of the vegetables. Uh, you know, I haven't really uh, done a side-by-side -side test to see whether that's true, but since it's so easy to just sanitize things with UV light, we've just kind of continued on uh, doing that. But it's important to me to figure out what are the active components here because, you know, if you're going out into a situation where it's, you know, it's COVID and you're, you know, middle-aged and you're in good health and your, your life isn't threatened by it, you know, it doesn't really matter that much whether or not this thing works anymore. But if you're going out into an environment with, say, like, you know, bird flu and some of the bird flu strains that are going around now or, you know, having like a 50% plus uh, mortality rate, I would really like to know whether this is doing anything for me. So uh, the reason I have this concern is there's been a lot of studies coming out recently that have been talking about the ineffectiveness of you know, N95 masks and certainly you know, just the, the medical masks. Uh, some of the studies are absolute garbage. Uh, you know, there was one that was funded recently by the WHO and the WHO uh, staked their reputation very early on uh, telling people that you could just wear these you know, junk masks, you know, they're no worse than the N95s. Uh, and recently they funded a study uh, where I got to think that the goal was to try to prove that they were right about that. They wanted to prove that the masks that have like the gaps all around them and are just homemade, made out of like whatever cloth, you know, th that wasn't bad advice to tell people you don't need the, the real ones, you can just make your own garbage ones and those are just as fine. So their goal, I think, was to uh, be proven that they weren't giving people bad advice. And I read the study that they uh, created, which came to that conclusion, you know, that was the conclusion they wanted to come to, I believe, and that was the conclusion they came to. I read through the study, and it was just a really garbagey uh, study, where they didn't really actually even have a control group. They had two groups. One group wore just N95 masks, one group wore uh, uh, just medical, uh, the, the, just the medical masks with all the gaps and everything, uh, and they found that there was no difference between the two groups. Now, if you actually read the study, you found out that one group actually was wearing N95 masks while they were working, but there was no accounting for what they did all during the rest of their life, you know, going to grocery stores, going to the mall, doing, you know, going to their family parties and everything. Uh, it was just during work hours. Uh, and the, uh, so, I mean, it was, it was like a crapshoot as, as to whether, you know, who knows when they were getting COVID, COVID when they, were they getting COVID while they were wearing this, while they were, were they getting COVID when they were, you know, just at home, you know, doing whatever, or, you know, just grocery shopping, not wearing a mask? There was no, there were no controls for that. And the medical mask group, uh, there was no control uh, for that either. And the medical mask group was allowed to wear these masks whenever they felt like they wanted to. Whenever, whenever they were in a situation where they felt like there was a chance of them actually getting something, they were able to wear the N95 mask anyway. So you got these two groups being compared, and they find no uh, statistical difference between the groups. But, I mean, it was, just, it was just kind of garbage data. Now, the study was great in that it was forthright about that. And if you read through the study, you realize it was just a big heap of garbage and they were comparing one pile of garbage with another pile of garbage. And they found out that, well, these things are pretty much the same. Yeah, big surprise. Um, so I'm, I'm always a little bit uh, reluctant to just believe the conclusions of a lot of studies when I see them because so many studies are, are aimed at coming to some kind of a conclusion and, you know, surprise, surprise, they come to the conclusion that they were trying to uh, land at at the end. If you actually read the studies, they, you can usually, you know, find out what was actually going on and you can find out whether there was a, a, a decent study or not. And there have been some decent studies about N95 masks that have 
uh, got me, uh, you know, a little bit concerned as to whether or not these have any actual utility when it comes to blocking viruses. Uh, one in particular was measuring the particulate size of particles that are coming out of people's mouths when they are, uh, you know, coughing with COVID. And apparently 90% of the particles that come out of people's mouths are uh, too small to be stopped even by an N95 mask. So only 10% of the particles are even being blocked. So it's, re it's really got me questioning as to whether or not you know, these things have any utility. Certainly they have utility for all sorts of things that are not virus related. I wear the mask whenever I'm working in a dusty environment, uh, uh, you know, when I, if I'm kicking up dust or sawdust or if I'm cutting stone uh, you know, during uh, wildfires. Uh, if you live in an area with wildfires, it would be really important to have N95s. So there's no question that they have utility uh, you know, outside of uh, blocking viruses. But honestly, if we get to a point where there is a, a virus going around that has a really high kill rate, I would like to know whether or not the N95s offer me any kind of protection. From what I can get from the studies, it seems like the studies that are, are better done suggest that they do confer some degree of protection. Now, a lot of the studies uh, will say, uh, you know, it's negligible or it's not really all that important. A lot of them will, will, uh, will pin the effectiveness of an N95 mask as, uh, as it relates to a medical mask uh, to somewhere between 7 to 15 percent effective. And that's not nothing. Uh, but at the same time, if you were going to get in your car and you knew that there was only a 7 to 15 percent chance that you were going to uh, survive that drive, would you take the trip that day? Probably not. You know, 7 to 15 percent, it's, it's a nice edge to give yourself, but it certainly doesn't feel like, you know, oh, well, now I've I got this on, now I'm safe. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, do they offer any protection at all? Have they offered me any protections at all? And I tend to think that they probably have. Now, why is that? Now, am I just, you know, this is what I want to believe, and, you know, despite all the studies, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep on believing what I want to believe. Um, maybe, I guess, but uh, <laughs> the way that I'm thinking about it is that I need to rectify the fact that myself and my family have been completely disease-free, uh, you know, communicable illness-free over the past several years as a complete uh, you know, turnaround from the way things were before. There's something that we are doing that is making a huge, huge difference. I think certainly going out less, uh, you know, reduces your opportunity to get a virus. If you are going out half as many times, you are, you know, cutting your chance of getting, uh, you know, a germ by half. And, uh, you know, that's not insignificant. Uh, but I tend to think that the masks probably also play a role. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, if these masks are blocking 10% of the particles, that's not going to do you a whole heck of a lot of good if you are in an environment where you are just inundated with these particles. If you are in a healthcare environment or if you are in an office environment where you just you got a sick coworker right next to you or you're in like a, like a school environment where you, you know, you've got ill people all around you, blocking out 10% isn't really going to make that big of a difference because, well, it's kind of like if you're wearing like, like a raincoat, it's going to protect you from a light rain, but if you just jump into the, uh, into the ocean, you know, it doesn't matter if you have the rain going on at that point. So I think that it seems to me that the N95 masks with that kind of like somewhere around 10% effectiveness rate are probably still having some utility for people that are kind of marginal. If you're doing other things that are, I'm sorry, it keeps kind of sliding back as the sun's starting to come into the greenhouse and I know it really makes my face all like, well, it's like just all bleached out when I'm like that. So I'm kind of uh, leaning back here to try to stay out of it. Um, and I'll try to wrap up this video in the next minute or two too. Um, but it seems to me that if you're kind of a marginal case and you're one of those people that is kind of on the edge, you're not really exposing yourself to that much, you're doing the hand washing, uh, you know, you're doing the sanitizing and all the other things, uh, giving yourself that extra 10% bump, you know, that's more meaningful at that point uh, where, you know, you're, you're in a place where, you know, the needle can kind of go one way or the other and kind of giving yourself that little added uh, additional protection, you know, might have some meaning. Now, again, if you are in a situation where you, you are just inundated with virus and you're not doing anything else to uh, to uh, uh, try to prevent transmission at all, it seems like the 10%, you know, isn't going to make any difference. If you're out for eight hours a day, it's like, 
you know, maybe you're able to avoid getting sick for the first, you know, half hour. <laughs> but then, you know, if you get it like in the, in the last seven and a half hours of the day, you know, what does it really matter whether you block that, that first half hour or not? So it seems like that is the utility for them. So I'm going to continue to stock them. I'm going to uh, continue to, I don't actually honestly use them really anymore. Uh, you know, given the, the state of the pandemic, I feel like my test has run its course. I've, you know, learned what I wanted to learn. Uh, at this point, I'm, yeah, I'm still not trying to like hang out with a bunch of sick people. I, I try to. I think the idea of staying out of dense crowds is, you know, is efficacious. So you know, I'm kind of continuing with that. I'm not really messing with the N95 mask when I'm going out, um, you know, largely because it is. Uh, you know, there are downsides that come with it. You know, you are breathing in some uh, plastic particulates. You know, as you uh, use these, they kind of break down. You get a little bit of that in your lungs. So it's not without cost. It's like a cost-benefit analysis. And at this point, I feel like I'm better off. Uh, just uh, you know, going commando without the mask, and you know, if I end up uh, you know falling ill, uh, you know, it, it's not that kind of life-threatening situation that uh, you know you would have if you had some kind of another illness. So, so that's where I'm at, and I'm certainly going to continue to stock them. Uh, you know, for all the other th reasons that you have them. If you're in a dusty environment, you know, if I'm cleaning up and there's a bunch of mouse turds, you know, going up in the air, um, you know, that's not stuff that I want to have like inside my body. Uh, I know some people are really macho and they're. They're cool with that. It's like, oh yeah, I'll take mouse shit in my lungs, and I'm not, that's what men do. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm happy to avoid that kind of stuff. You know, if there's wildfires, all those other reasons, uh, you know, certainly they they have usefulness. And I know from personal experience, when I have done the types of jobs where I am kicking dust up in the air. Uh, I can feel it. I can really feel it in my lungs, and I kick myself later. I'm like, yeah, you idiot! You should have been, you know, you should have had a respirator on for that. And then when I do that same job and I have the respirator, it's like I, you know, I didn't expose myself to anything at all. So I know that for larger particles, dust, ash, things like that, they have a great utility. Uh, but it's really critical to understand what they are good for and what they're. Okay, I'm just, I'm in the sun now. It's just, it, it's, <laughs> we're gonna wrap the video up this way. Uh, it's important to know the utility and the lack of utility of your different tools so that you will not, um, you'll bet the farm uh, on something working that isn't going to work under a certain circumstance. So, uh, you know, while these things have been kind of like, uh, they've been politicized, they've become kind of a, a political symbol. I mean, you, you, we all know like, you know, today, like in the summertime, you go to a park and you see somebody that looks like this. I'm just, you know, in this, like, I see people who are outside in the breeze, separated out from people, and you'll have people still wearing these, and uh, they become a symbol. Uh, there's certainly a uh, an impression that I get from people who are, you know, keeping these things on. Actually, usually people have like the they still use the garbage ones, uh, you know, to this day. It's, um, I think, it gives them a sense of emotional something or other, uh, but it, it definitely. Uh, you know, we all have opinions on that and they become kind of a symbol, but it's really important to separate the utility of something from what it has come to, to symbolize. Uh, if you don't want to kind of get caught up in all that hype and uh, uh, thinking about things in magical ways, thinking about things in terms of their symbology as opposed to what they actually can do for you. Because if you, uh, you turn up your nose at something that can help you just because of what it kind of has come to represent for you, uh, you're gonna miss out on opportunities for you know, making your life better for you and your family. So that's it, I hope you found this helpful. I think that uh, N95 masks still have their place. They are nowhere near as effective as I was presuming they were going into the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, it would seem that that's uh, the case from the, the data that I'm seeing. I don't think that they are 0% effective Certainly, the data doesn't even uh, bear that out. You know, it's all saying somewhere between seven, you know, fourteen percent or somewhere in there, which isn't nothing. But it's also nowhere near close enough to a hundred percent where I would want to bet my entire life on these things. That's it. I hope you find this helpful. And until the next pandemic, thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers! Behind me is the sanitizer that I still use for sanitizing mail and groceries that come into the house. I feel it has a lot of effectiveness in just getting rid of mold spores and things like that, and making the produce last longer. If you'd like to watch a video about how I put it together, click on that video link right there.